there is nothing wrong with your internet, do not attempt to adjust your settings. We are controlling the podcast. We control the squealing and the screams. We can make your heart flutter, your eyes blur from tears, or sharpen your mind to crystal clarity. For the next hour, sit back. We are in control of what you hear. We repeat, there is nothing wrong with your setting. You are about to experience the awe and mystery known as the female mind. You are now entering the Fangirl Zone. Welcome to episode 89 of Sci-Fi Talk on the Fangirl Zone, a podcast where we discuss shows on the Sci-Fi Channel. I'm Steve. And I'm Sean Fangirl S. And tonight we'll be discussing episode 3 of season 3 of Killjoys. Oh my gosh. They've been crazy this this season, and I just want more, 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 which we will get more, 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 I'm sure, but still. Yes. Right. We need renewal. We, we need, need renewal. renewal. All right. Why don't you hit us with the ratings news? All right. Episode 3 had a 0.17 in adults 18 to 49 with 0.638 million viewers, making it the 25th overall cable show for the day. Not too bad. No, nope, not bad at all. Do not have Live Plus 7 for Episode 1 yet. Ah, I don't know. I think we're just not going to get them anymore. Who knows? <laughs> it's frustrating. We'll see. I mean, it, we can go almost a month without any, and then one will show up, and it's just like... Random. Is somebody hacking Nielsen system or something? <laughs> well, wait. They did have a problem at one point, so maybe. You never know. Yeah, I know. They could be the ones... Having issues. True, true. All right, so let's jump into episode three. All right, the Hullen have eyes. The three. Killjoys trace the last coordinates of a black root ship to a radiation scorched planet, finding an abandoned Hulan training camp, creepy inhabitants, and a surprising connection to their past. So, creepy, creepy. What the heck, creepy? Got it. Yeah, <laughs> got it. <laughs> <laughs> At least. This episode, we didn't exactly have something that looked like what came out of the movie, The Hills Have Eyes. Right. But it wasn't too far off. No, it wasn't. <laughs> All right. Why don't you take us in, Steve? All right. Let's start with old one versus new one. <laughs> no. Still not happy. Right. Uh, Team Johnny. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hashtag <laughs> Team Johnny. <laughs> Yeah, uh, somehow Zeph magically gets access to the Hulan ship, which, of course, doesn't make Johnny very happy. Uh, do you blame him? Oh, no, not at all. Mostly because and... Zeph had kind of, just not real smug, but there was just that underlying smugness. Yes, there was. Like, I was able to do something that you weren't. <laughs> right, like, ha ha. It's like, oh, yeah. girl, don't do that crap. We will take you no. down. You don't know this yeah. fandom yet. Yes, because <laughs> we know Johnny is smart and he knows it, and Zeph is smart, but insists on telling everyone else about it. Yeah, I don't think she's had a whole lot of social training in that regard. No, not at all. And of course, that definitely rubs Johnny the wrong way. I mean, you have to get along. You can't just be like, I'm the smartest one in the room. <laughs> yeah, because Johnny's learned how to dumb down difficult concepts for those around him. And Zeph, not so much. It's not she even doesn't have that skill. Yeah, but it's not even dumbing down. It's just like normal speak, not like scientist speak. Right. So yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say dumb down, but instead of being like, oh, the coordinates are blah blah blah, blah and you have to take a left at. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, really? Just be like, uh, go here. Yeah, that away. Yeah. <laughs> Second star on the left. <sighs> and, of course, Johnny is also not real happy about um, having to be put into the mentor role, especially seeing that he didn't volunteer for it. Sure. But, of course, <laughs> Dutch points out that, you know, they're going to need all the bodies they can and minds that they can get for the coming war. Yeah, but Johnny also said his mentor pants make him look fat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So they get on the ship, and sure enough, Dutch... Before Johnny can even figure anything out, I mean, he sees the map, at least, and Dutch is, let's go, 
Yeah. Pushes the button. <laughs> she needs to slow down because maybe we're going into a black hole or a trap or, you know, who knows? Exactly. I have no idea where this thing's going to take us to. Yeah, pretty My, much. It's like... I want to know what that is before. <laughs> right. She's like, I'm going to do the thing. Johnny's like, don't do the thing. She's like, I'm doing the thing. And even Dobbin's like, wait a minute. Maybe we shouldn't do the thing. And she's like, dude, we're doing the thing. And so uh I think the brothers were like on the same side in this one. Yes. But uh Dutch is just like, woohoo, adventure. <laughs> <laughs> and poor Zeph. I'm sorry, because Zeph at this point is like, oh, my God, what's happening? Wah. And I think Johnny wanted to look at her and go, oh, oh yeah, this is normal, by the way. Yeah, get used to it. Yeah. So, of course, it takes them to this planet, and it feels like we just... um Walked on to a Twilight Zone set. Oh, yes. So it was so cool, though. It was very, like, weirdly 50s, though. Right. So when- and, of course, the, the the greeting hologram is definitely 50s because she had the poofed hair and the long dress. And- yeah, that was, like, all very, like, poofed out like Lucy. Right. And the pearls. Didn't she even have pearls? Yes, she did. It's like, when is this supposed to be taking place? <laughs> yeah, and how long has this base been around if if it was actually built anywhere near that time frame? Right, which is weird because you have advanced technology, but very 50s, unless somehow it's in foil hat time. Because we don't know if this is supposed to be like future Earth or what, or if they kind of came from Earth where the Holland somehow like at Earth during that time, and they kind of took that with them. Interesting theory. All right, I shall take off the hat. <laughs> <laughs> of course, they discover that it's a training compound to help the Hulan make them appear to be more human. In other words, teach them how to smile. <laughs> right. It's like, you have to do more than just smile with your lips. You have to smile with your eyes like this. It's like, all right, all right. That's creepy because you look like a serial killer. Stop. Yes. <laughs> Stop. And then all hell breaks loose as a solar flare happens. <laughs> yeah, because uh, suddenly the ship decides it's going to do its own thing. Right. It knows that it's not a good thing for it to be there, so it jumps into orbit, leaving everybody but Zev stranded on the planet. Yeah. I don't feel like Zeph is... Well, no, because at first, with the first solar flare, because there's more than one, wasn't there? Right. So the first one, it was just just Dutch and Dobbin. Yes. And then the ship jumped out, and then Johnny figured out how to bring it back. But Zeph was, like, freaking out. And I love Johnny has to calm her down. And he's like, listen, do the math. We have to do the math. We have to get back. And then, like, suddenly saying, you know, do the math instead of dumb it down, she was okay. But they get back, and, yeah, Dutch and... Dutch and Davin are running from these weird creatures, which was weird. <laughs> right. Yes, I just yeah, repeated definitely... the same word because they were creepy. Yes, they were. And, and one of them managed to disarm them because they couldn't see. And then it right. gets scary. Right, they keep their eyes closed. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, that's got to be scary in, in and of itself. Kind of like when you're in a haunted house and it's a real dark room and all of a sudden you feel something. You know, you're going to be like, oh my God, what is that? But... Zeph kind of lets it slip when they still had radio contact that, oh, yeah, if you're out there with the radiation for too long, your your eyes are going to melt and stuff. It's like, well, not the thing to say when they're fighting things that they can't see. Exactly. You you say, uh, you guys need to get fine cover as soon as possible. Right. Yeah, that would make sense. They end up finding their way into an old house, which looked like almost like little house on the prairie-ish or like a right. doll house kind of thing. And like I said, Johnny manages to get the ship to come back and, and he comes out. But we, so we have like two separate things happening at the same time. And Davin and Dutch end up meeting a girl when they realize that the, this weird thing that's outside is coming back for them. And the girl's name is Quinn, which we find out, but all of a sudden she's like, this way. And it's like her, her face is covered mostly, so you can't really see, but she's like going down into what looked like a crawl space. Right. So I mean, at least they would be safe from the solar flares, but it's like, okay, who do you trust? This girl who sounds nice or these creepy looking things outside? Can they have to go with the girl taking me into a hole in the wall, in the floor, I guess? Right, yeah. 
anything away from the creepy things and we'll take our chances with what's in front of us. Yeah. I mean, at least she, they can see her. And so they end up meeting Yarin, the spokesman for the Unseeing. That sounds very ominous. Yes, it does. The Unseeing were once regular people who were transformed into slaves for the Undying, which happens to be the Hulan overlords who used the Unseeing as models for their own behavior. So these people, this is generations later, have changed the idea of... Slaves into worshippers is the way I'm feeling this happened, yes? Right, okay. absolutely. So, like, the stories probably changed a lot over time. And suddenly they were the good guys, and they they helped us, and they did this. Not, not the reality of what the unseeing did. Right. So, I, I don't know. I guess that's normal. Yeah, I believe that um, that does happen, because I'm sure while they were... The Undying were there. They felt like they were slaves. Mm -hmm. But then they all left and left one guy there to kind of look over them. So, of course, one person's not totally going to be able to enslave a a whole group of people. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. So the the last seer basically had to kind of let them do their own thing and over time basically turned it to where, yes, the undying were the gods and we should be worshipping them. I guess that makes sense. It's still weird. Especially when we find out that Quinn's eyes are sewn shut. It's like, what is up with your eyes? That's creepy. Yes. What happened? And I have a feeling that that's what they were doing to all their children because they didn't want them to be hurt in the solar flare radiation. Well, they do meet, well, like you said, Yaren was the spokesperson, correct? Yeah. Yes. And he says that those people who are above ground gave their sight and everything to protect them. So they chose or were chosen to live above ground in the radiation, which, ew. And then he's t- he does tell us that, oh, yeah, we all sew our eyes shut so that when the undying come back, then we will finally look upon them with was it like fresh eyes, basically? Right. <laughs> Virgin eyes. Yeah, it's like, um, maybe no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just can't. That sounds so weird. Uh, there's been weirder cults, That's believe true. me. <laughs> yes, because there's always weird things that happen, and uh, all you have to do is look up weird cults, but be careful what you Google. That's all I'm going to say, because I don't want anybody here to end up in a weird cult. Right. Absolutely not. I don't want any of our, our listeners to have to sew their eyes shut. That's not a thing that I want happening. So please don't do anything like that. Right. And so Yarn's about to punish Quinn, and Dutch isn't going to have any of that. Well, no, because Dutch isn't a jerk. That's right. Quinn helped save them, and there's no need to be punishing a young girl for doing that, right. but... Except she got up to the planet side, and that's a no-no for the under people. (laughs) Yeah, well, you always have a rebel child, I guess. She does explain it, though, later. She says, you know, because essentially they're all blind, so their hearing has improved, but it's always so loud underground. So that she goes up there when she can, just for the peace and quiet. Yes, Which I totally get it, because sometimes you just need to go and, like, sit in a room where there's no noise and try to just breathe. You and I both know that working retail, and we've worked Black Fridays, so. Yes. (laughs) Sometimes you're just like, I just need to go sit in my car in absolute silence for a few minutes. Yes. Just kind of helps decompress. But, I mean, I I get that, you get that, but apparently... Like the the elders, and I'm saying that, you know, in, in air quotes here, because, again, the elders are like, no, this is our life. You can't change anything. And, again, we've seen that time after time in shows and books, movies. It's like, this is our way. This is how we've always done it. It doesn't matter that it's uncomfortable. And right. there's always the people who are like, listen, we need to change this. Which, <laughs> somehow I don't see Yarin being real flexible, though. No, no. He was not real flexible, and neither was the last seer. Right. Now, of course, Dutch is taken away and inter- interrogated by the seer, and Davin and Johnny are also put in a holding cell, and 
They're trying to escape, which they do manage to do. They run into Quinn again, and Quinn drops the bomb. She informs Davin that he was there just three days ago looking for the remnant, which he has no memory of doing. Which is what we've seen at the very end of the last episode, that he right. goes up in the ship and it just blinks away. Yes. But how Which, does he go somewhere and he doesn't know? Yeah. Because the only time that happened is when Klein was, like, melding, mind meld kind of thing with him. But I don't right. know how to use the right terminology here because it was weird <laughs> then, too. But Klein is gone. So is Klein totally gone then? I have a feeling he is not just yet. That's too weird. We've seen him die. I, I know. I know. But... That green goo is, it stores everything. Oh, almost like a memory? Yes. Oh, th oh, that'd be really weird. Now we're going to have to watch where that goes. Right, because I believe there will be a way to communicate with Klein, even though he's dead, through the plasma. Oh my gosh, that would be so weird. <laughs> yes, it would. Or at least access his memories. Maybe not communicate, but at least access his memories. Okay. Should be interesting. Right. So, of course, Quinn takes Davin and Johnny to a room with whizzing computers while Dutch learns that the last seer, seer who's Hewlin himself, was ordered to supervise the human slaves, slaves by none other than Klein himself. Yeah. Well, Klein's gone, buddy. And the seer turns the crowd against Dutch as they start to maul her. Johnny rings the bell that announces the Undying are arriving, and the ship shows up, and they escape. Yay, just in time, because Zeph finally figured out how to bring it back. Right. Now, of course, Quinn and Davin do find the remnant that they were looking for. It was uh, stashed in the uh, place of prayer, shall we call it. Yeah, and I'm still questioning this whole thing, because Davin's like, Oh, hey, have you ever seen and i'm like okay wait first of all really have you ever seen right this yes symbol? <laughs> and he draws like what did he call it klein's mark okay right. it's not like you did it really hard into paper so she can feel the indent it's just like i'm just drawing this really quick it's like what are you doing her eyes are sewn shut and it's not like that's braille i didn't understand that at all Right, yeah, that was a little... I guess we're going to have to give that to just Hollywood at this point. Yeah, that, that's a hand wave, I'm afraid. All right. That was weird, but they find it at least. Yes. We don't know what it is. That's for darn sure. Okay. But we know it's got something to do with Klein, more than likely. It looks like something from Quidditch. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> really does. He's a big Harry Potter fan, and, you know, he just bought a prop. Maybe that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, while he was collecting humans, he saw that and like, thought it was... Yeah. yeah, there you go. I've explained it all. <laughs> or not. Yeah. Uh, and well, we get some Anila I in this episode. I was going to say, final. we have crazy Anila. She looks so weird. She just looks so, like, gaunt. Like, do they do her makeup so she's, like, washed out like that? Oh, absolutely. It's weird looking. Because, yes, it is. Because, I mean, we see Dutch and... Dutch is Dutch, and she's, like, vibrant and healthy, and then Anila does not look healthy at all. No. And then she wears, like, that weird bright green lipstick. And that makes the white stand out that much more. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, hey, look who else is here. Delsea. Friggin' Rigan, Rigan, Rigan. Right? Oh, I can't stand that woman. And no. And the fact... Name it Johnny Mist. Right. Wow, yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Double tap, Johnny. He would not be good in the ZA. That's all I'm going to say. That's right. <laughs> but Anila is asking about her daddy. And Delsea, who is like, shut up, quit touching me to the guards. It's like, all right, right. let me tell you what happened. You're, oh, I'm sorry, he's gone. And Anila's like, well, where did he go? And she's like, oh, no, he's dead. Holy crap, holy. Not the thing to tell Anila. No. She was like a toddler, like throwing a tantrum. Only it was a yes. very bloody, murderous tantrum. Yeah. So apparently that's not what you do. No, not to a crazed, cold-blooded killer. Right. So maybe Dalsail will learn, because Dalsail wasn't too far away from arm's reach, where Anila could have grabbed her and killed her as well. Yeah. And 
a little surprised that Anila didn't go ahead and take Delsea out, but apparently there's plans afoot concerning her. Well, hopefully uh, things will be a little different, I guess. Maybe Delsea will think before she speaks, but I doubt it. You would think that being that high up on the food chain, that she would have a little bit better idea of what to say and when to say it. <laughs> yeah, well, apparently nobody's ever made her, like, take like, take the consequences for what she's done. Right. So. Until Anila's general makes her clean up the mess. <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought that was so awesome. <laughs> and I know that yeah. sounds bad. Because he's like, where are you going? She's like, I'm going to get somebody to clean this up. He's like, no, no that would be you. Yeah. After he basically, you, like, uh, shoves her face in it like you would to a dog well, I never right, did, but you know what I mean. And, right, yes, some people will... Rub their face in the mess. Mm-hmm. And that's basically what he was doing to her. And, like, I think she kind of freaked out. Like, holy crap, nobody ever does this. Nobody talks to me like this. Right. Uh, Absolutely. She did not know what to think about that. <laughs> welcome to Holland. You are not the top dog anymore. Exactly. But apparently, Delsea still is like, all right, you know what? I, I can still do this. I can turn this around. Because she has a plan for the for Anila and her to share in vengeance. And somehow, Dulcea seems to think she's on the same level as Anila. Right. Okay. Really. First of all, I think that's your, your really bad move. But Yes. You know, she, she tells her, we are queens and queens rise. Because, you know, obviously, crazy one and crazy two, there's definitely something to fear with, with those two. Right. And anything that threatens power is something that is going to be taken down. But Delcea seems to think, like I said, that, you know, she's going to be up there. And I think she is ultimately just a pawn that Anila is going to use and sacrifice in the future. Oh, absolutely. Even though it seems like Anila is grooming her for leadership, and it looks like, you know, because Delcea is just like kind of got that smug look on her face. Because Anila's like, oh, yes, yeah, we will be in power. Like, yeah, okay. Is this an error in judgment? Is this Anila playing a game? Or is this, like, from Delsea's point of view that we're seeing all this? And this is what Delsea thinks is happening. Yeah, I believe it's more that this is what she thinks is happening. Because I think Delsea is going to be sacrificed myself. I do, too. I have a feeling before this is all over with, she would have wished Johnny had killed her. Right? Because you don't know what this crazy girl's got in her back pocket. No. She's a whole nother level, and I guess we'll find out soon enough. Well, let's hope so, at least. Yeah. I'll say, uh, you should have stayed dead. But anywho, crazy episode. We get a yes. Gila, like, way, way different perspective on her than we've ever seen. Right. Absolutely. Just to see how far out there she really is. Uh, Just by seeing that, you know that this is not a stable person. (laughs) Right, right? Well, maybe Delsea will see that, because apparently everybody else who's hauling on that ship knows what's what. Yeah. All right, well, we want to know what you think. Do you think Delsea has got a long game here? Do you think Anila is playing Delsea? Do you think we need to be talking more about Johnny and Zeph and a possible meeting of the minds there? A clash? Who knows? Why don't you let us know? Go to fangirlzonepodcast at gmail.com or over on www.fangirlzone.com. You can find our contacts page and let us know on Twitter, on Facebook. On You can click the email there and leave us a note on our webpage. However you want to do it, because we want to know. And if anyone's interested in joining Steve and I for a future episode, you know, let us know that too, because we love talking to fans and we love hearing your theories. Because sometimes you guys really think it out way more than Steve and I do. (laughs) And then uh, we can all have our tinfoil hats on together. Absolutely. (laughs) Please rate and review us on all the platforms that you're finding us on. iTunes, Spreaker, Podbean, however, because good ratings and reviews help other fans of the show find us. And tell your friends about us. We do hope you're enjoying the podcast. Let us know if there's something you want us to talk about that we're totally missing in these shows. Because sometimes Steve and I... try to concentrate on the main thing and we're missing some of the peripherals so let us know all right well for this episode of sci-fi talk i am sean fangirl s and i'm steve let's do some nerdy shit and save the day 
until next time.